So we're going to look at the artwork of Claude Monet, and this is one of his paintings. It's a print of one of his paintings um, called the Japanese Footbridge, and this is his bridge going over his uh, water lily pond in his garden. He lived in France and um, built this garden um, so that he could paint all the beautiful foliage and plants so he painted different views of the same area in his garden and he painted it over and over again at different times of the day um, to show the way a light hit um, the garden and at the different times of the day and how the light changed the actual color and the way the colors looked. So we're going to create our own version of the Japanese footbridge today and we're going to use um, crayons and then we'll need some paints for the second portion of the project. So you'll need a pencil, an eraser, some crayons, and some white paper. The first thing you'll need to do is draw a curved line across the top of your paper. So I would start about four finger space down in the bottom right corner or the left corner, depending on how, which way you draw. I'm lefty, so I draw backwards. Uh, righties might want to start on the left and work your way over. So you're just going to sketch a curved line. It should go up and then start to go, it should go up and the, the highest point should be in the middle of the paper. And then you're gonna curve down. And bring it down to the left side of the paper, okay? And it's about the same distance, should be about the same distance. You wanna sketch really lightly. I'm pressing hard so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't want you to press hard because we're gonna want to draw the line in crayon. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually draw a parallel curve. So now we wanna try to make that curve the same exact way we did it over here, but we want to draw it about four finger spaces below. And again, we wanna try to keep a uniform thickness, which means it's going to be the same all the way around. So that parallel is going to do the same thing. The parallel curve is going to do the same thing that the top curve did. Okay, and try to get it as even as possible. Try to get your line to curve. So we're using lines right now. And then we're going to draw this, um, the rail, okay, the spindles. I would call these the spindles, and they're going to be vertical lines, and they're going to be straight up and down. So you have to be careful because ha kids have a tendency to draw them on an angle. You want these lines to be straight the top of the line pointing at the top of the paper and the bottom of the line pointing at the bottom of the paper. And you can space them out about four finger space and draw another one. And actually I'm drawing two. So I wanna have a left side and a right side. So I'll have my left side and my right side, four finger space, left side, the right side, I wanna have a width to it, okay? And then I guess we could put one more here. And one more here. Okay. And now let's take a look at Monet's bridge. There's one more curved line coming through the middle, I guess it's so that people don't fall through. There's too big of a gap. So once we have these drawn in, we have another section that we need to draw another line in between the top and the bottom, and that's the railing in the middle. 
So we're going to draw another curved line, okay? And it's parallel to both of these. And what I do is I just do a piece here, skip over this piece here, skip over this piece there. And then following the same curve, I'll do the same thing over here, same thing over here. Okay. So now I want to make the base of my footbridge. I want to use another line at the bottom to make the, it look a little thicker. Okay. So I'm going to draw the same curved line. So you're going to get really good at these curved lines because you're getting a lot of practice. And we just want to curve, curve, curve. Like so. Okay. The next step is going to be to go into um, these lines with a crayon. And I want to use a light blue crayon and a white crayon. So I've actually chosen three colors. I'm going to use a white. I'm going to be using a light blue and this yellowy green color because um, I see these colors in this painting. So, and the blue might be a little bit on the dark side, um, but I definitely see this, this greenish color. And the way the light is hitting the bridge, as you can see, the light is where the color looks lighter. And then the shadows are more of like the blue shades. Um, there, you can see it a little bit better. So you have the blue shades where the where the shadows are, and then where the light's really shining, you have these like lighter, it's not quite white white, it's like this yellow greenish color. So we're gonna use that. And I'm gonna go along my um, pencil lines. So I'm going to do this in a time lapse. Um, so if you could just watch what I'm doing, and I'm gonna color in my bridge with these colors, and, and I'll show you where I'm gonna put the white. So if you take a look, I was just putting some of the uh, lighter color on the top right portion of the railing. And then most of the railing I filled in with the light blue. And then I came here and I put some other um, areas of light with the lighter green. So I'm kind of mixing and blending the light blue and the green together. And I'm putting the light green in between the two lines on the bottom. And I've made the two lines on the bottom I've made them blue lines. So I just basically went over my um, crayon line and in uh, my pencil line in with the blue crayon. So just basically outlined over the railing and the, the, the floor of the footbridge. And I'm just trying to make the drawing look interesting by combining the light green and the blue. I want to press really hard with my crayon so that when I paint over this, this will show up underneath my darker greens and my darker blues that I might use in my painting. So this is one side of the railing and I need to poke in a few um, lines to represent the railing on the other side of the bridge. So that's where a student might get a little confused. So I wanted to do this side first. And so uh, you're just gonna mix and blend your yellow, green, and your blue. And we're gonna keep maybe this side a little bit lighter um, and have this side, the side that's going to be a little bit darker. 
so I can even fill in some blue on top of my green over here because we want the left side of our bridge to appear to be a, a little bit darker. So we're gonna put the blues on top of these greens. But I, I like to mix them. So it's fun to mix and blend your colors with crayon. It's almost like using oil pastel. Very similar. And you wanna make sure you're pressing nice and hard so that when we paint over it, you can still see these colors, okay? And you wanna work neatly, as neatly as you possibly can. So I have blue outlines, I have the green in the middle, then I went over the left side with some blue. I'm putting blue in my railings and in the, the rungs or the spindles, whatever we would call these. And now I wanna put, I wanna go back to my lighter crayon and I'm going to put in some extra vertical lines just with a crayon right here and then I'm going to do another one right here to the left side of this one and to the left side of this one so the light's really shining on it I'll probably do another one to the left side of this one as well and try to keep them as straight as possible so that it looks like maybe we could put another line, another curve line here, so that it looks like the railing from the other side. So it might seem a little confusing. I didn't want to have all these crisscrossing pencil lines everywhere. Oh, you just do your best. Um, Monet was one of the first artists to ever work outside, so his artwork looks a little bit more abstract. It's not so realistic it doesn't look like a photograph okay so it's okay if you know your lines um look a little confusing up and in here you could see how many lines he had all right so uh we just want to you know create the illusion that we see some railing over here and then for this part of it we're just going to want to come over and come with our blue crayon and Put some more of that top railing that we see through here and that represents the other side and then we can put maybe one more spindle over here and then maybe one right there so we have a lot of crisscrossing lines going on but we still see a lot of the white of the paper in between okay so it shouldn't be all scribbly just try to have some curve lines, parallel curve lines, three of them, and then another one down here, fill in with your crayon, and then you can put some of the railing that's in the back, okay? The next thing we're gonna talk about are the um, lily pads that are in the board. So Monet was an impressionist, and what that means is he just did a quick brush stroke to show just the impression of, you know, the lily pads floating on the top of the water. He wasn't painting them, drawing them out, and then painting them in very realistic. He worked outside, so he had to work quickly because the light would change, and then the shadows and the highlights would change. So um, impressionist artists work very quickly. So their artwork looks up close, just like brush strokes and dabs, okay? But from far away, it starts to read like, um, you know, the willow tree um, branches and leaves and some foliage and branches and um, leaves on the trees back here, okay? Notice he has darker colors behind the lighter bridge. And behind the darker part of the bridge, he has lighter colors, okay? So we're going to talk about that when we paint. Um, but right now, we want to draw in some lily pads. So we're going to use some oval shapes and fill them in. And the lily pads that are closer to the viewer are going to appear larger. And the ones that are further away, we're going to draw them to look smaller. So right now, we're focusing on this landscape. And another thing to talk to you about um, Monet's landscapes is that... He kind of makes you feel like you're in the space of that landscape um, because you don't see anything beyond the edges. You, the whole paper or the whole painting is filled up with trees and water and the bridge goes, 
it 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 starts somewhere off the page and it ends somewhere off the the page okay so it makes you feel like you're right here sitting in front of the lily pond so now we're going to focus on drawing some lily pads and some um, foliage in that's growing out of the water so we need to establish our horizon line or the the water line so we're just going to put a horizontal line just about here and if you need me to draw it also in blue i will um just so that you can see where it is but i don't want to go all the way across the paper because they're right in here we're going to have some like water plants that plants that are growing at the edge of the pond over here and or might be growing in the pond so we're going to draw some first some like curved lines that kind of go up and then curve out almost like a, a tall grassy plant okay so we're going to use just this light crayon and we're going to leave some space in between you'll leave some white of the paper showing in between so we're going to draw that plant and we can actually have it kind of come out and curve down some of the um the grasses and they can almost touch the bridge that would be fine if they came up and touched the bridge so just curve lines going up and over <clears throat> to the right in the middle kind of staying straight up and then going off to the left okay so we're going to start to do the edge of the water with some just the illusion of some plants so <music> just threw in a few plants with the vertical curve um, to the left to the right three patches of some plants that might be growing at the edge of the water or in the water okay and then I came to the left side and I put in um, some plants that maybe it's like a lavender hedge uh, a bush of lavender um, another purple type of plants I'm not exactly sure um, that's what it looks like to me and so I used the light blue uh, for that and then I threw some green in between and then I drew in some horizontal lines but they're kind of broken they don't go straight across the paper and they could be a little wavy but the water's pretty still so um, you know they're really more of a flat calm line and I want to leave some space in between because now I want to throw in some lily pads and I'm going to start with I'm going to start with this green um, just so that you can see it really good but if you want you could use your lighter greens and uh, we'll start with lily pads that are further away um, back here because they're going to appear smaller so they're just like flat little ovals that you would draw in and kind of space out okay and again, you want to have them done with like the lighter color. This way, when we paint our um, watercolor, uh, we're going to use a darker color so that these spots really show up. So you want to put a lot of them in there, back there. And then as you get to the um, closer to the viewer, who would be over here, they appear to get a little bigger so you can make them slightly larger lily pads but again here i'll go with the darker crayon so that you can see you want to stagger them so they're not in like a perfect rose so now they're getting a little larger and as they come forward or move down on the paper okay so each time you move down on the paper they're going to get a little bigger and try to keep them as flat ovals, not drawn on diagonals. So you want to keep your paper straight so that it's easier for you. If you draw with your paper crooked and not straight in front of your body, sometimes everything you draw goes on a slant. So you just want to be aware of that. And then I can even use um, this like uh, kind of tealy 
greenish color too. It's like a blue green. I can use this color too. So I don't know what colors you have in your crayon box. So you just use whatever you have. Now we would be using white too, but it's really hard to see white on white paper. So we are gonna put some white um, flowers and I'm gonna show you what that should look like. I'm gonna show you with a blue, um, but I'll have you do them in white. <music> So now you can see I took the light green and I started to draw some horizontal lines across the top of the blue lines, just like so. And I still have left a lot of the white of the paper so that all that white will be able to accept some paint. And I want to kind of get rid of all of these crumblies from my crayons. And I want to finish the edge of my paper over here. So I want to be able to finish um, working on these um, kind of grassy plants growing out of the water or at the water's edge. So I'm going to start by just drawing some tall ones now because now as we get closer to the viewer, the plants can look larger, okay, than the ones back here. And I'm going to start with some vertical lines with my crayon, like so, pretty straight, and then I can curve them at the top kind of like seagrass. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, seagrass by the beach. It's tall and it bends. So we want to do that. And then I can even do some more that looks like it's coming from off the bottom of the page. So I'm going to bring them over, let them go over, curl over water and I want to use a lighter some lighter colors too so they might not show up that good right now but when we paint over them they should show up nicely so let them just look like they're kind of curling over I think I want to go to this color too. bring this tealy color in but you can use whatever colors you have in your crayon box Now what I'd like to do is I want to put in some of the color um, for the trees in the background. So I wanna do all the lighter colors. So wherever the trees look like the light is shining on them and it looks like the leaves are lighter, I wanna put that in with crayon so that when I paint my darker colors in the background that they really stand out. So um, my willow tree is back here. I'm going to use this like yellow green to represent and I'm going to use um, some vertical lines and I'm going to color in between here with this yellow green so I'm going to make like half of this tree look like it's um, done with yellow green so the light is shining this way so these are verticals and I'm going in between my ridge and I'm going right up to the outline. I can leave some space in between because that white of the paper will um, fill up with paint when I paint it. I want to go right to the top of my paper and now I'm going to start with a little bit of a darker green. It's like a, not really dark, but it's darker than this color. And I'm just coloring up and down and I'm creating like lines, filling in with lines basically. So it's an up and down motion because it's a willow tree, they hang down so I, I don't want to color this way. I definitely want to color straight up and down. And then over here, so 
as you can see, there's another tree here that has some just light, but then the rest is going to be dark so that I can paint in. I'm just going to put the light colors in wherever I see them. And I'm, you know, working quickly. Now here, I can work this way. Horizontal or circles. I can work in circles. So it looks like patches of leaves. And there's a little bit in here. not too much over here. All right. Now before I finish, I want to take my white crayon and I want to do a couple of things. I want to go over the lighter part of my bridge with my white and I want to press really hard. And you can't really see the white on the white paper. It's really hard. So make sure you're going slow and just staying on your crayon. You don't want to scribble all over the place because it will show up underneath the paint. And we just want to do that to the lighter parts of the bridge where the bridge is the lightest. Just go over where you colored in with that lighter crayon on the bridge. And then we're going to put some flowers in and those will be represented just with some white above your lily pads. So it's very hard to see white on white. So just take your crayon and color above your lily pads with some white. And that's so that when we paint over it, we'll be able to see it. So the next thing we want to do is in the water, we want to see the reflection of not so much the bridge, but we're really seeing the reflection right now of the trees in the water. So you're going to think we're messing up your artwork, but we're really not. In here, we're just going to lightly color in some vertical strokes. Just some vertical, and we want to see the reflection of the willow tree. And we want to go up and down okay and we can do a little bit of that over here make sure it's up and down okay and now we'll be ready for some paint So you can take any paint set that you have. Um, well, it needs to be watercolor, but it could be a pan set or liquid watercolors. I have liquid watercolors in my cups and you'll need some water to move the paint around and um, you'll need your paint brushes. And all we're going to do, and this is really the second part of the project. So you just need to do the first part of the project for today. And then we'll do the second part of the project next week. But um, it's a good idea to wet your paper. So we're going to take our brush and we're going to just take water and wet the paper just with some water. You just start to wet your paper. You want to get the whole paper wet. I'm going to paint horizontally because that's the direction that I'll be painting most of my brush strokes in. And I just want to go from the top of the paper all the way to the bottom. Just wet it a little bit. One coat, that's all you need. So now that you've wet the paper, you want to wet your paint set. So if you have a regular paint set, you just take your brush and you're going to add water into the paints and you're going to let it um, 
soak in a little bit so that the paints become easy to mix. So what's in your paint set is dried watercolor paint and you have to add water to it to get the paint to move. So while that is soaking away, I'll just put this off to the side, but I can use my liquid watercolors. They come in a bottle and I squeeze them into these little cups. I have some blue, I have some turquoise, and I have some green. And I'm going to take my paintbrush and dip it in the water. I'm gonna use um, a small brush, not a real big brush. And I'm just gonna to start to take my green and paint it in wherever I think I should be painting the green and let's see what happens to our crayon. Okay, so I'm going to paint horizontally right on top of my crayon and I can take water and push that paint around too. So I can take the water to help push the paint on my paper. And as it goes over the crayon, it's starting to kind of bead off of my crayon. And I can actually see the crayon underneath. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna paint some more dark green. And I don't have to paint around my bridge. I'm just painting right over it. And then look what's happening. Anywhere that I pressed hard with my crayon, um, the paint is not sticking and the crayon is showing through. So I'm going to move the paint around, move the paint around with my brush and the water. Now, if I put too much water on my paper, it's going to make my paint really, really light. So if I use too much water with my paint, my paint's going to look very light and I want it to be dark in some areas, really dark green. And I'm painting back and forth. And if I have another brush, I can actually take that other brush and that brush, I can move my paint back and forth too. It's a bigger brush, but not everybody has these big brushes at home. So use whatever brush you have. And I'm just painting back and forth, spreading the paint Use both sides of the paintbrush and you should paint off the table, off the edge of the paper rather, so onto the table. So you might want to put a placemat underneath. And now I'm going to come over to this side of the paper and I'm going to use my green and paint back and forth. Back and forth. I can use a little water, a drop of water, not too much and just keep pushing the paint. Use both sides of my brush. I'm gonna go back in and make some areas darker if I want to. I can use different greens. I have a, I have a aqua or turquoise mixed in with my green so I can make this darker. And if I paint with a darker green, the areas that I colored in with the light crayon and the white crayon are really gonna show up. So now I'm gonna come back to this area under here and do the same thing in my area with the water and take my water and push it around, push my paint around. And I'll keep going all the way to the bottom. If you notice now I'm starting to transition into more of the like the turquoise or I can go into my blue paint and make it darker over here. So you don't wanna just paint with the green definitely want to use like some blue you want to put some blue in there and reflect the sky into the water with your blue you can also if you have some salt you can take a little salt and you can dip it right into your really wet paint okay 
So if I take my brush and add a little extra water, make it real watery, and go back in with some more paint, and I can take my salt, if you're allowed, and I can put the salt in my paint too, and that's going to create a different effect. It's going to soak up some of the color and it's going to put more speckles and spots in my painting, but um, you won't see that until your painting's dry and you shake all the salt off. So now once you have the salt on your paper, you don't want to paint the areas that have salt on, on them. So you don't want to get the salt in your paintbrush. And then I want to paint all this area in here. Come in with my blue green. You can mix blue and green together to get a blue green if you don't have blue green in your paint set. And I can push this around with my paintbrush and push it around with the water. You just want to have in the water some different colors going on. Not all paint. You don't want to paint your whole entire painting in with just green. There's mostly green in the background. And we can bring more of the blue in here. And if, you know, you, you can put some blue in, some streaks of blue in wherever you feel like you might need them. If your water looks a little too blah or green or maybe not dark enough in some areas for the plants that you colored in in crayon to show up. And if you leave some darker paint in, just keep spreading it back and forth until you don't have any puddles of paint. And then if you have like a real puddly area, this is a great way for you to absorb some of that paint is by dropping the salt into it. And it'll create some textures in your painting. But we won't get to see the, the effects of that until it's dry. You can't put it in the dry area of your painting, so you have to do it in a wet area. Okay, so it has to be pretty wet. So I'm just going to throw in a little more um, dark blue or aqua down towards the bottom. Then maybe I'll come in with a little more green. And just have fun painting and adding the, you know, a few different greens or blues into your artwork. And then remember, wherever you um, colored in with the crayon, it should be totally showing through as long as you pressed hard enough. If you didn't press hard enough, you might not see your crayon. So you do have to press really hard when you do the, the part, the, the drawing with the crayon. And then in here, if I want to, I think I want this to be darker, I can go back in and paint over it some more. In this top section, I can mix my green and my blue green together and I can really make some of these areas darker now and I can again push that paint around with a paintbrush. I want to get some, I definitely want to get some more darker color in here so my bridge shows up a little bit more. So I went back into my bridge so you can go back and forth. It's okay if an area starts to dry and then you want to paint it some more. You just can't paint over the areas that you put dropped some salt into. So if you already did that, you just don't want to um, be brushing the salt around your paper. So I'm coming in with my greens and going back over my bridge so that I can really see the crayon show up. So you definitely want to go over it with some darker colors. And then you can always, if you feel like you can't see where you colored with your crayon, you can take a tissue and gently wipe and blot. But you want to be careful about that because, and that can create some textures too. Um, but you don't want to rub too hard. You could rip your paper. So you just want to be really careful when you do that here like on my foliage here I might want to blot away some of the paint so you can kind of experiment play around with it and I can't wait to see what you've created okay
Have a great day. Bye.